what's the deal fam welcome back to the channel i hope everybody's doing well so today i have a really really nice video for you and really really short just introducing these bad boys right here these are 31 millimeter festoon type bulbs from a company called mars auto the reason why i picked these up because the bulbs from my map lights were flickering like crazy and definitely we can't have that so i'll show you that in a second but the reason why i chose these just because of the reviews you know there's a lot of festoon bulbs on amazon and i'm sure some of you guys know definitely me when i first got this subaru uh once you type in year make and model they will list you, you for 20 bucks you can get literally almost every bulb that's in the car like the map lights dome lights reverse lights and so forth so they you know i mean they have them all but they you'll see they blow out pretty quickly um that's why obviously they're so cheap then i made another video a while ago with a company called i'll, I'll place that up top um a company called yorkim and the bulbs are actually pretty damn good they were very very bright but soon after i've had multiple locations where the bulbs started to flicker uh some of the chip sets were getting blown out and it kind of sucked so let's go inside real quick let me just show you in the car let me show you what i'm talking about but this looks like a pretty good option that i picked right here obviously you guys know i do my research so this is it right here this is the one bulb. This is the one Yorkin bulb that's left. There's none in here because it was flickering. And so what I am gonna be doing is I'm gonna be showing you guys how to just take this out real quick. I'm gonna change it out. Um, again, guys, these are 31 millimeters and all you're really gonna need is a pry tool. This is a very, very simple install. Very, very simple. All right, so let's go. Okay, guys, real simple. There are two notches. There's one right here and one right here. Now a small flathead can fit in here. Um, just put something soft instead. Maybe some, if you only have a flathead, put some tape. I have a pry tool. This insert right here. And it just pries open. Look, once you push it a little bit, that's it. And now it just hangs down. These hooks right here. They get inserted in there when you're putting it back. You get what I'm saying? So you're putting it back in reverse, if you understand what I'm saying. And now the bulbs are right here. And then just, just put your hand in, just pull it down, and that's it. Now I just wanted to show you this real quick. These are a comparison of the bulb that was in here and the new Mars Auto bulb. This, just in case um, I forgot to mention something that was brought to my attention, this here is from a company called Sea Light. So what ended up happening was the Yorkin bulbs, all of them were finished. And I didn't know, I actually purchased another brand because I saw this had 12 chipsets in it, 12 individual LEDs over here. And those were blowing out faster than the original Yorkins that I put in. So not everything that glitters, you know, is gold type of thing. So. On the back of it right here, see these, uh, it looks like a vented portion. That's like a heat sink just for heat. But with the Mars Auto one, it's way more pronounced. Look at that. You could actually see how the back portion is. It's way more pronounced, those heat sinks. So definitely for heat dissipation a lot better or more efficiently. All right, so now time to put this bulb in. Real simple, as I said, try your best not to touch the the chipset this is the problem when you have big ass hands there you go so you put one piece in there first now we just take that just turn it and angle it the way you need it just angle it straight down and that should be fine just get another one Bam, angled nice and neat. And now all we gotta do, as I told you before, you put this in backwards. You put those notches in the groove. And that's it. So now, and test them out. Then you could, you know, start your car, make sure there's no 
canvas issues. No lights, nothing, nothing on the dash. Everything is good. And now, as I said before, I will be checking on this stuff for you. And these are actually really, really bright, man. Wow. They're very, very bright. Like, very bright. So, I like them. I like them. We just got to see how long they last. You know what I'm saying? So, later, I'll come out, show you guys. Actually, I'll just pull the car back in the garage in the dark and show you guys how bright they are on the inside. Oh, you know what, guys? Before I back this into the garage, I forgot. This uh, dome light over here, it's probably an older bulb as well. And if I had to guess, it would be one of those sea light bulbs as well. Because if I remember correctly, the last time I did change this, because this one was flickering too from the Yorkim. So, yeah. So let me just show you this real quick. In case anybody, in case you don't know how to do this, this one here is very, very, very tricky. From the normal eye, it looks like you could insert a pry tool right under this but you couldn't be further from the truth what you need to do is get a very make sure the pry tool is thin and what happens is there's a i'll show you there's a very very thin layer where this glass meets the plastic so i'll show you exactly what i mean it's freaking tricky as heck and if you don't pay attention, you will break the... There we go. Yes. If you don't pay attention, you will break this plastic. Ready? You literally gotta like just... There we go. So this is what I'm talking about over here. There's a, this, there's a upper plastic portion that sandwiches to this portion right here. So what happens is it's very, very tricky. It's very, very deceiving to the eye. So what happens is the entire time you might be putting your pry tool under this plastic piece, which you're gonna end up damaging the entire housing. You have to try to get it right in where this lip, this border is right here between here and this plastic piece right here. Because normally, as if you insert the pry tool like the other portion for the map lights, guess what? You're, you're, you're literally gonna be inserting it under this plastic and you're gonna break it. So real quick, pull this bad boy out. Put one of these bad boys in. Nice and easy, as I said guys, be careful, don't touch the stuff. Make sure the bulb is nice and straight. Give the in, inner portion a little quick wipe down. And now, just put that bad boy right back in. Boom, boom, that's it. That shit is bright. That shit is bright. All right, let's get in the garage real quick. All right guys, it's close to 11 at night. The reason why I'm out here was because while I was editing, the take I did in the garage earlier, it just didn't look that well. So there was some light protruding from the garage door and it was just messing up the scene. So I said, you know what? Let me just go back in the dead of night and just redo it. So I'm here. So I'm in the car right now and I'm gonna turn on the light so at least you could see the brightness of it. Get a real feel for it. That's just one. That's two. Got the uh, spare bulbs right here that was left over. This is the dome light right here. As you can see, that bad boy is freaking bright. Lighting up literally like the whole back. So now I got the three lights on in the car. Got the bulbs right here, the two C lights that were left over that I was using, and one Mars Auto. Now guys, a couple things to note. And to be fair, the Yorkim, the C light, and the Mars Auto. None of them threw a code, so it was canvas free. Also, all of these bulbs, they were non-polarity sensitive, so you can put it in, doesn't matter the orientation, the bulb will still work. The sea light and the Yorkham lights that I had before, they were a brightness of 6,000K. The Mars Auto is 6,500K white and 300 lumen. They did not state the lumens on the sea light nor the Yorkim. So at least, you know I mean? We have um, like some type of 
gauge of brightness on the Mars Auto stuff. And to be fair, I'll see how long it lasts. You know, I mean, the Yorkham and the Sea Light, they did work good at first. And then they started, you know, some of the chipsets blew out, started flickering and so forth and so forth. And the crazy part is this, guys. I really don't drive this car that much. You got to understand that the only time these lights are actually on is if I have the door open while I'm working on something for the car. Or if I arm the car, it'll be on for 30 seconds. Or if I approach the car with the key in my pocket with the proximity sensor. These lights in here really don't get work that much. So there was really no need for me to have, this is I think like the fourth set of bulbs that I've gotten for this car. So time will only tell now um, how well this is gonna work if you get my drift. So I'm glad you guys were hanging out with me today for this ride. Hopefully you guys learned something about the install and how delicate it could be, especially for the dome light. And definitely like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you all soon. Take it easy.